Is he free? You're to go straight in. David, it was... It was nice working for you. It, it's nice to have you back with us as well. Yeah. yeah. Picking up the pieces? No, you didn't do that badly, David. Well, what does it say on my file this time? Emotionally unstable? An excess of subjectivity, I believe they called it. Oh, yeah, I like that. What's it mean when it's at home? You get too involved. You care. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. So, what now? You know perfectly well. I don't. I want a job. I want to know what my job is, my real job. I see. No one's told you. Well, you're back where you were, David. Now, you are entitled to some leave. I'd rather have a job. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing worthy of your talents just at present. Uh, well, uh, unless... Uh, well, there is a man called James Palliser you might keep an eye on, but he does mix in rather exclusive circles. Winchester, Cambridge, you know, top civil servant, all that. I'd better buy a bowler. What's he done? Nothing yet. We're rather more concerned about what he may do. What may he do? A defect. I've been contemplating a little trip. Hmm. Your place in Tuscany? Do you know I'm rather bored with Tuscany? It's about time I had a change. You look tired, James. Well, I am. There's a great deal to do and so little time. Tired? Hmm. You're not ill. Oh, no, no. Nearly overworked. There are only 24 hours in any one day, you know. Oh, Susan, you should have married me. Oh, but you're already married. Your work, your colleagues. Uh, they're all so dull. Colleagues always are. Uh, is he a colleague of yours? An assistant, shall we say, and rather an important one. It seems I have a meeting. Oh, now, do forgive me, Susan. I'm very sorry. You see what I mean? Yes, well, don't forget tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. There might be some rather interesting people there. And you see, his speciality is money. Yeah, what's he doing, working for the government? He's got more of his own than he can spend. He also has a profound knowledge of our economy. That's why he's compiling the EEC report. He's the one man who knows everything that's in it. And you say he's going to defect? Yes. Where to? Poland, probably. Certainly the Eastern Bloc. Yeah. Why should he do that? I mean, it's not money. Obviously not politics. Oh, no, it isn't. Not love. Well, I suppose you could call it that. The fella? Yeah. Mm. Phil happens to have gone to Warsaw and won't be coming back. You're very well informed. Why not? They're always doing it, aren't they? Trouble is, it usually works. Mm, unless we move in first. Right, when do I pick him up? Oh, he's an important man with important friends. Until we get permission, all you do is watch. Oh, yeah. This bird. Yes. This is Morris. She's a widow. Her father went to school with Palliser. Anything else known? Nothing directly. We might read that later. Mm-hmm. Now, Palliser is going to the Polish trade fair tomorrow. He'll take Mrs. Morris with him. You better go along and keep an eye on them. What's my cover? Security liaison. Well, don't you think that might make them uh, just a little suspicious? Oh, we'd like that. Uh, use your own name. It could precipitate action. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm paid for. And Palliser is in a red fire. Yes, I did notice that. But we don't want him killed unless it's absolutely necessary. This Palliser is such an important defector. He's going to have a minder, isn't he? Now, if I'm blown, one of us is likely to get killed. 
So I'm not hanging about waiting for authorization from Mr. Palliser's important friends. Now, you will remember I did tell you that, won't you, sir? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that stuff? I suppose it might be easier just to hit yourself with a hammer. Perseverance, Susan, that's the only chance. <laughs> ah, Mr. Palliser. Mr. Kamarovsky, how nice to see you. May I present Mrs. Martins? How do you do? Please? I'm so pleased to meet you. Is that our Zubrovka? Yes. Oh, that's not a lady's drink. Let us see if we can find you something a little more gentle. I'm so pleased. Now, dear lady, excuse us one moment. In a capitalist society, business always comes first, even before beauty. Dear friend. Mm. Scotch. comes out. Well, it hasn't burned a hole in it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, shall I top you up? That's awfully kind of you. It's time you came to join us in Poland. I need time to think. What an intelligent man you've been thinking for over a month. You like Mrs. Wilson. I'm delighted to hear it. He sent a message to you. Come at once, no doubt. When do you think it would descend to such tracks? Huh? <laughs> of course. This message is on tape. Uh, may I have it, please? A friend, not while people are watching. <laughs> no, I've seen that. I could live with it. <laughs> you like that, do you? Oh, well, at least it's valid. What's your name? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, David Callan. Mrs. Morris. How do you go? Do you work for the government? Oh dear, is it that obvious? Do you know which way around ah, it's supposed to be? Susan. Oh, James, this is Mr. Callan, Dave Callan, James Powers. Oh, how do you do? How do you know, sir? Mr. Callan's also in the civil service, James. Oh, really? What branch? Security. <laughs> Indeed. Anticipating trouble here? No, no, I don't think so. Do you know our red friends, they always get a bit worried in public. Perhaps they have reason, Mr. Callan, when people talk about them as you do. <laughs> yes. Excuse me, please. Really, Susan, that was hard to like. It wasn't, was it? Well, why on earth did you say it? You know why, James. Did you Lovely weather for the time of year. Yes, yes it is. It's particularly clement. What do you want me to do, Mr. Kelly? What I want you to do, mate, is to hang around, look around, see if you can pick out any heavies amongst this lot, and then get back to your car. Heavies? Don't worry, I'm not going to start anything here, am I? Promise. I promise. Would you like to try so? Mm -hmm. Are we staying much longer? No, I'm due back at the Treasury now. Oh, good. I'll drop you off. There's no need to bother. It's no bother. I see. Mr. Callan. I think I owe you an apology. I don't think so, Mrs. Morris. I was very rude to it. Oh, I'm quite used to that. But I did have a reason. Look, Mrs. Morris, please don't worry about it. I'd like to explain what it was. Sorry, what was that? Well, if you can't so much fun. Well, I could give you a lift home if you like, and we could uh, talk on the way. You've got a cab? No, no, i got a cab. It might not be easy right now. No, I'll get one, don't worry.
You are clever. I've got influence. You must have cabs around here are about as rare as kangaroos. I'll tell you where in a minute. Mrs. Morris, you don't have to tell me anything. But I won't. You see, I know rather more about security than most people, Mr. Cabot. Oh, yeah? Have you been in it? No. I had a friend whose husband was investigated. A very close friend. Who are? He was a naval officer. Supposed to be giving secrets to the Russians. They never proved anything either way. Oh, well, it happens. My friend's husband shot himself. And she nearly died, too, of grief. I thought she did. Except grief never kills you, not really. I only think it does. Mrs. Morris, uh... <laughs> you know, most of us in security, it's just a... nine-to-five job, you know. The glamour boys, they're the ones who do all the investigations. The rest of us, we just sit behind desks and fill in forms, work our expenses. It's just rank and file, you know. You don't look like rank and file, Mr. Callum. <laughs> we should tell that to my boss. <laughs> Where do you want to go? Baseball. Baseball. Is that it? Yes, I own it. Very nice. Would you like to come in and look around? Well, it's very kind of you, but I've got to get on. Some other time, maybe? Nothing. Oh, Mrs. Morris. Some nasty things are happening in our business. And we're not particularly proud of them. And yet you go on doing it. No, let's wait till we meet again. We'll have more time to argue. Well, I hope we don't argue too much. <laughs> I don't like arguing. Bye bye. Goodbye, Mr. Keller. Thank you for the Pleasure. Uh, that is a bit of all right, Mr. Callan. No? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bet she takes a bath every day. Is she, is she one of them Mark the Hardys, is she? Oh, yeah, yeah. She'd kill you as soon as look at you. She's got a black belt in karate. No. Did you spot anything? What? At the exhibition, I asked you to look out for some heavies. Did you spot anything? Oh, yeah, yeah, there was one. J just a young fella, quite tall, dark, curly hair, standing by the bar, drinking lemonade. You'd leave with a, an older man? Yeah, j just a couple of minutes before you did. You sure he's a wrong one? Well, I mean, I can't swear to it, can I? But I'll tell you this, I would not want to meet him down a dark alley if you was out working. Ridiculous music. I've been in this business since before your mother first wondered who your father was. And I shall ask you to treat me with respect. All right. You're good. Remember it. Your business is to keep Palliser alive and ready to leave, and that is all. Now, if you should find that impossible... Don't worry. I'm good, too. If you are not, I should not have hired you. But British counterintelligence is also good. And there's a man from security talking to Palliser today. 
You're joking. That must have told me himself. They may try and take him away from you. <laughs> you want me to take on counterintelligence? If they try to take Palliser and look like succeeding, I want you to kill him. That's him. Trent. Are you sure of him? Yes, I'm quite sure of him. Lonely can smell a crook the way you and I can smell a curry. Besides, this one, picked up last year. Unlawful possession of firearms. That sounds more promising. We now have authorization for Pallister. You have to pick him up tomorrow. What about the lad? Well, if you can get him, he may have some useful things to tell us. The boy is expendable. Pallister is not. Mm. Place the boy at. No, no, should be difficult. He goes to Pallister's every day, lonely to follow him home. Mm. You'd better be careful. So would you. Yeah. Right, pick him up tomorrow then. Time and place. Up to you. Just be discreet, that's all I ask. Sir. MCF to control. Over. It's me. Huh. I got a message for you, Mr. Callan. Perhaps you'd better. Yes. I got him, Mr. Callan. He didn't have to give me a time, though. He drives like a raven maniac. He's at flat free Elm House Ealing. Good lad. Stay with him. Yeah, but, I mean, what if somebody wants a cab? Well, you lift your bonnet and you make as though you had an accident, don't you? But suppose he tow me away. Suppose I come over there and belt you. Stay with him. Very well, Mr. Callan. Mr. Callan? What? Do you remember that big Polisher at the exhibition? Geezer that laughed all the time. What about him? He's just gone in the flats. Better send Carter. Yeah, lonely. Stay there. Mr. Carter will be with you soon. Good. Five thousand. Did I not tell you, sir? Yeah. Yeah, you told me. And, uh, I counted it. And tomorrow you will earn it. It goes at four. You will drive to Dover and take the hovercraft to Calais. Then the train to Paris. You'll be met at the Gare du Nord. How do I know the guy is meeting us? He will know you. Yeah? Oh, that's nice. I should like it very much if Palliser gets there alive. Yeah, yeah, you told me. I hope very much you were listening. I told you I'll do the best I can. And I must be satisfied. If anything goes wrong, I shall be at the Hotel Lombardy. You can ring me there. <laughs> Don't worry. What could go wrong? I thought you weren't coming. You said six o'clock. Ah, oh, something came up. Oh. My job, something's always coming up. Nice, it's very nice. Yeah, it's a business like any other. And it's compensations. If you're a fella. <laughs> yes, it does. It keeps me. Oh, this way. Many friends, do you? Not many. And what about that uh, that man at the exhibition? James Palliser. Mm. <laughs> Poor James. No, no, he's a family friend. Oh. You sell much of that stuff? Those harpoons? There's quite a few. It's dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> they are. Yeah. What's wrong? No, I could understand people who want to go around killing things for pleasure. The flat's this way. Right. Thank you. Scott? Thank you. You can put your coat down over there. Oh.
Thanks. Cigarette? Hmm? Oh, I don't smoke. <laughs> I'll just sit down. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just thinking. I invited you over to show you how sorry I am the way I spoke when I met you. I know why you invited me over, Mrs. Morris. Susan, please. Why? I looked you up. It wasn't a friend's husband who killed himself. It was yours. It was a stupid sort of lie, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. You don't really know me. You despise my kind. Andrew was a very alive sort of man, full of plans, schemes, ambitions. No proud problems, no hang-ups. He was in submarines and that was exactly what he wanted. His life was marvellous and it always would be. And then the investigation started. Boards of inquiry, cross-examinations, questions, questions. And all I could do was to stay with him and watch him disintegrate. Six weeks later, he shot himself. I'm sorry. I believe you are. Honestly, I do. All the same, it could have been you who hounded him, couldn't it? Isn't that your job? Well, if it had been you, what would you have said? Not too bad. I'm afraid we made a slight mistake. Because they did, you know. He was exonerated. Posthumously. Mrs. Morris, this is a job. And someone's got to do it. Now, I know that is the oldest excuse in the world, but it does happen to be true. We do do the best we can. And sometimes innocent people get hurt, and sometimes they die. I've said before, we're not very proud of it. But it happens. I would like to say that I had nothing to do with your husband's case. I mean, I wasn't even in the country when it happened. Why are you telling me all this? Because if, uh, if we're to see each other again, I think there ought to be some sort of truth between us. Oh, damn you. Can't you fight fair? I, I didn't... I didn't come here to fight at all. Excuse me. Yes. We have a bug in Pallas's house and his flat. It seems he's due to leave for Poland at four. Naturally, we will prevent this. Equally naturally, we'll do all in our power to protect Pallasa. Her knowledge, delete that sentence, substitute. Equally naturally, we'll ensure that no harm comes to Pallasa. <sighs> Friends in high places are a pest. We'll delete that too, Liz. Jane. Oh, yes, yes. He wanted me to have dinner with him. I said I already had a date. Oh, uh, do you mind? No. Thanks. He, uh, asked me who. David, he warned me about you. He warned you? He said you'd hurt me. What did I do to deserve that? He sounded so strange. Perhaps he's just a bit jealous or something. No, no, not James. You wouldn't hurt me, would you? I, I would try not to. All right, what's the matter? What's wrong? You've hurt me already. Tomorrow may be too late, my dear boy. May I come in? You should have stuck to the drill. 
I'll pick you up at lunchtime tomorrow. Yes, I was frightened. I was on my own, you see. And I suddenly thought, I can't do this thing. I can't do it. You should have gone out, seen a friend. Anyone follow you? No, 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 I'm quite sure. I came by tube and taxi, just as you told me. Well, let's hope so. What did you come here for? I, I needed to talk. Have you eaten? Thank you. I am not hungry. Have a drink, then. Hmm. Would you like one? No, I never touch it. I'm so sorry if I've upset you. I did ask Komarovsky first. And he said, OK. Well, of course. Why shouldn't he? J'aime, chérie. Je t'assure que je t'aime. La vie en Varsavie est dure, parce que tu n'es pas ici avec moi. Do you have to go? Have to go. You have been so nice to me. So patient. I th think I'm in love with you. David, it can't happen not with that. That is part of my job. A gun killed Andrew. Can't you get another job? You're a clever man, David. You could easily find something else. You could even work here for a bit if you wanted. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't somehow see you as a shop assistant. No. No, it's not that. Well, what, then? When you're in as deep as I am, they don't let you go. You'll wear that tape out. I'm... Um... Very fond of it. <laughs> yeah, you must be. What is it? A message from a friend of mine. You should have stuck with birds, Dad. They don't make half the fuss. My dear boy, for me, the fuss is the most important part. You're joking. I'm afraid not. If it weren't for the fuss, I wouldn't be here now. Uh, may I use your telephone? Who do you want to call? Uh, Mrs. Morris. Why do you want to call her? She's a great friend, and I don't like seeing her make a fool of herself over some man. Who's she gone on, then? A man called Callum. Never heard of him. He was security liaison officer at the uh, trade fair. Stay away from that phone, Dad. I assure you I'll be extremely careful. No, I won't have you chatting about some bloke in security. Look, it's not the least important, you know. I've looked him up. Not even on permanent record. Probably just a temporary. But... No. Mrs. Morris, thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Uh, it's all right, me coming in like this. I mean, you're not... Why shouldn't you? Well, you know, when you're busy working. <laughs> I'm glad you came. It's almost time for my coffee break. Come and have some. No, I can't. Uh, better get off. Oh. As a matter of fact, I was only passing by, and I thought I'd pop in with these. 
chocolate. Yeah. You don't think it's a little old fashioned? Ah, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I know <laughs> I'd love it. Come and see me soon. Yes, I will. Bye bye. Bye. Drive to Trent's place. You go in, then I put on the milkman's apron and follow him with a crate of bottles. And then? I stand at the end of Trent's hallway and then I start chucking the bottles. At his front door. If you say so, Mr. Cannon. I do say so. But he sounds balmy. I'm in a balmy business, mate. Well, you gonna rely on me, Mr. Callan? I've got no option. Oh, we forgot one thing, Mr. Callan. What's that? As soon as I have chucked them bottles, I start. This came this morning. Yes, sir. You read it? It wasn't marked secret. Yes, sir, I read it. Callan neglecting his duty for some woman or other. Well, is it true? How could I possibly know, sir? Because you like him, Liz. You trust each other. Well? I'm sorry, sir. I can't help you. Very well. How did it come? By safe hand, sir, from the Home Office. Coat on, Mr. Palliser. What a uh, Just get your coat, Mr. Palliser. One day I'm going to kill you. We can all dream, son. You ready, Mr. Palliser? No. no, don't be a fool. No. Uh, no. Now my friends are going to be very annoyed. I didn't kill him. I didn't let Trent kill him. I brought him in. So what's wrong with that? I don't think your mind was on your work. Oh come on! With a tear away like Trent around, you must be joking. You spent a greater part of last night with Mrs. Morris. I did what I was ordered to do. I didn't order this. Well? Who the hell wrote that? Don't know yet. Is it true? I did what you told me. Is it true? Yes, yes, it's true! Except that bit about neglecting my work. I did not neglect my work. But you will if this goes on. Unless you're thinking of leaving us? I was thinking of it, yes. If you try, I shall take reprisals against you. And Mrs. Morris. I hope you believe me, dear. Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe you. Good. Then find out who sent that letter. Where was it delivered? Home office. Here's the envelope. Palliser, isn't it? I mean, it's just bloody well got to be Palliser. I won't find out. Well, you go and bloody well find out. You've got him, you ask him. At this moment, he refuses to say a word. Then put Snell onto him. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You don't have to answer that. He's got friends in high places. Which the bloody hell I had? I want to know who sent that letter. I want to know who's not to the kind of work you do, and I want to know how they found out. Yes, sir. And stay away from Mrs. Morris. That is an order, Callum. Stop it! Your home office? You are Mr. Komarovsky. Dear friend, I'm delighted to meet you. You alone? Do you by any chance think you've come to arrest me? I never arrest people. You're here to protect me. Protect? Of course. Sir, I'm here to ask for political asylum. It's out of the question. You've just set up an operation. Which failed, I'm sure. It did it? Of course it did. I've worked very hard to make sure it did. You made it fail? Of course. Consider, dear friend, who did I choose as Palace's bodyguard? Not one of our men, and they really are very good. No. A brash young man whose only ability is to shoot straight. Is that really a fair opponent for you, Mr. Cannon? 
Why didn't you just come over to us then? Friend, I'm not alone here. Trade mission? Exactly. There's been a little suspicion of me lately. They watch me very closely. They're not watching you today? Dear friend, why should they? Today, my reputation is a fact. They're now quite sure that I'm trustworthy. Shall we go? Might be a little embarrassing if my colleagues were to return and find me with you. Who oh, did? <coughs> By the way, Mr. Palliser has a friend. Ulick? Yes. Is he still in Warsaw? Dear friend, I regret to have to tell you. He died under interrogation. Is it? It's me. Any luck at Palace's flat? Yeah, got it. Oh, good. Blimey. That milk. In our beginning of pong. You should know. You're the expert. Mr. Callant, that did not seem right. Just walking it up like that with a key. Why not? You're a respectable citizen now, aren't you? Respectable? In this game? God blimey, I was safe. I was thieving. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, mate. Sorry. Best I could do at the time. Sorry? Mr. Callant, are you all right? You get it? Yeah. Then yeah. let's have it. He must write a lot of letters. Look, he got two different type but about half a dozen different kinds of paper. Smashing flat, he's got an all. Lovely place. Oh, you want to see? He, he, he got some miniatures there. I swear I could have got 50 quid a piece for him. You didn't pinch him, did you? No, 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 honest. I couldn't. I reckon the nerves gone. What's it kind of... What, what are we looking for? Somebody's written an anonymous letter about me. Oh, that's dirty, that is. That's nasty. Well, it's not Palliser, that's certain. You sure? Yeah, I'm quite sure. Oh, what about Trent? No, no, it wasn't done on this machine. That was a long shot anyway. I mean, it's balmy, isn't it? Trent and Palliser, the only people who saw me with her. You've given up thieving, have you? Yeah, it's crushed my heart. How'd you feel about breaking and entering? If I'm not going to nick anything, what's the point? I hope to God there isn't one, old son. You're a very uncommunicative man, Mr. Palliser. Forgive me. I find that I have singularly little to talk to you about. You could be facing a very serious charge. I hardly think so. My resignation could cover it. An attempted defection? Oh, come now. I did perhaps talk to certain persons whom you told me were spies. That was indiscreet, I admit. But defection, you would find it very hard to prove that. You spent last night in Trent's flat. Well, my dear fellow, I quite often spend the night in the flats of handsome boys. I'm becoming quite notorious for it. That is why I shall resign. Do you remember Komarovsky? Komarovsky, ah, yes, the Polish trade delegate. And your controller. He's come over to us. You'll be seeing him presently. He no doubt told you a great many lies in order to consolidate his position. I'm quite sure about it. But he must tell us some truth, you know, if only to buy our protection. And he told you I was going to defect? No, I wasn't thinking of that. Told us about a boy called Ulek, the one who recorded a message for you in French. Which you still have. I should like it back, please. Certainly. <laughs> a delightful boy, but his English is atrocious. You won't improve it now. He's dead. You're lying. My dear fellow, why should I? Komarovsky's people interrogated him. They went too far and he died. It happens all the time. You would have made your journey for nothing. Tell me all about it, my dear fellow. You owe Ulek that much, at least.
get it? Yeah. A bit dodgy, though. Now, would you call this typing? But she nearly walked in on me. She's a lovely bit of stuff, isn't she? Here. You surely don't think it was her, do you? Could blimey thought she was your bird. Get lost. Go and get lost. Let me take your coat. No, not yet. Got something to talk to you about. You sound very serious. Yes, it is serious. Today I had to pick up your friend, Mr. Palliser. He was about to defect. James! I don't believe it. Well, we can prove that. <laughs> Funny. This was going to be my last job if I could swing it. I see. And then this other thing came up. Somebody wrote an anonymous letter about me, saying that I was spending all my time chasing after you and ignoring my work. Why? Why'd you do it? I love you, David. And I would like to marry you. But not while you're doing this job. When I saw that gun you carry, I didn't think I could go on. And I can't. Not permanently, not the way we should be. And so I wrote the letter to make them fire you. Fire me? From my department, fire me. Oh, it's not that easy. It's not that easy for either of us now, is it? I only did it because I love you. Look, they don't care about that. They don't even understand that. You know too much about me. That they understand. Do you want to leave? Oh, of course I want to leave. Oh, David. I'm not, I'm not even carrying a gun today. Look, I'm, I'm, I've got to go and I don't know, try and work something out. You come back. Yeah, of course. Of course I'll come back.
Callan, I told you I'd kill you. Come on. Let's get it over with. Hey, you know what I think? You don't even have a gun. You know something? This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Would she be a problem to us? Seem very sure. Yeah, I am. She doesn't like the work I do. She thinks I might come home. Dirty.